Okay, so we're going to create an arch first so that really we're just dealing with space, okay? So space is um, whatever you start with. We happen to be working on paper. You don't have to work on paper. You could be working on the side of a building or, you know, the side of a car. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we've got a banner just estimating this. This one doesn't seem quite as tall as the other side, but when we're starting an arch, we have to decide uh, do we like this, you know, whether or not it's got a certain uh, degree of curve. So I'm going to increase it because I think it looks pretty fun when it's more dramatic and get rid of that. Okay, so Alonzo, we have A-L-O-N-Z-O. -O. That's six. Okay, so I have an even number. So if I find the middle, then I know I have to have three on the right and three on the left. So I'm going to eyeball that and I'm going to frame this out. I think I'm going to give the A a little bit more space to live, so I'm going to go like that. So i got three there, one, two, three, and then I'll do the same thing on the right. <clears throat> Excuse me, my, I'm totally not sick, you guys. I just, for some reason, I think because I talk for 50 minutes a period, six, uh, six times a day, that my throat is a little bit angry at me. Okay. Sorry. Um, Okay, so Alonzo, uh, let me just, I'll start over here on the right. I'm going to try to think of something fun for you. That's the center of your box, so we'll go ahead and we'll write a uh, simple letter A. We'll use this arch as kind of the fun part, and we'll notice that it's going straight up and down, even though this leg's shorter. That's not a big deal, okay? So we'll, we'll find the center for the... Wait, I almost wrote the letter C. Of course, you don't have a C next. You have an L. What the heck? I don't know what I was thinking. All right, so an L is pretty easy. We're just going to go like this, but we're going to follow that curve. So we're going to put the curve the same, okay? And then we'll do an O. An O is like, we want to think about an axis, so like a centerpiece, okay? So we have, if we, you know, create little crosshairs, we can make an oval that looks like an O. So we have that happening for us right there. We've got... And in next, now I'm going to give you this pretty cool in that I like. Um, it's got straight sides, but then the middle, we don't start way up the top. We're going to do it like this. And then we have a Z, like Zorro. Okay, so we'll, we'll just do kind of a regular Z, keep it simple. And then we just have an O, so we may as well keep on the same plan, carry our little crosshair over, and do the O. All right, so now our big job is to make them into block letters or bubble letters. Um, Alonzo, can you put in the chat room for me, do you want them to be like rounded and bubble, or do you want them to be squared and boxed? A bubble. Okay, so we're gonna do them rounded around these little frames that we made. So we're just all we're gonna do is we're gonna round the little ends. Now you can go right around the center of these, or you can just get near it. That was just to help us figure out our spacing. Okay, so in the center right here, we'll just round it up a bit so it doesn't look like everybody else's, which is kind of the point. And then we'll make this round and we'll round out the end here and then we'll do the same thing on the inside of this O. We might want to increase the O's size a little bit. I'm not um, laying down one single line notice I'm just I kind of hover over the paper and then I lay a line so um, I think that's important to note. Some kids you know uh, for whatever reason in the teenage years you guys feel like you got to be absolutely perfect. Um, I hope that you get comfortable being uncomfortable and just un understand that you're not perfect. Nobody is. And lay something down on the paper and then work it out from there. Okay? You don't, don't expect yourself to be perfect um, because that's just, that's just unrealistic. You want to have a starting place and then you want to work to get better no matter what it is. Okay. So I need to make an adjustment right here because... 
that wasn't really fitting very well, so that wasn't that hard. I just made an adjustment. I'm still not in love with that angle, so I'm going to back that angle up a little bit. I'm still not happy with it, so I'm going to just get outside of that box a little bit and borrow some of that space offered by the O next door. Alright, that's better. Looked like it had like a finger or something. It was pretty bizarre. Alright, so we got one more O to deal with and then keep it roughly the same size. And then we're going to have to do our three-dimensional part, which is the part what people find to be a little bit challenging. So I'm going to put the vanishing point nice and low so that we have a lot of opportunity to make some long three-dimensional sides. So we're going to go all the way out to the furthest edge of our letters and we'll create diagonals that go all the way to the vanishing point while we're learning. So I went way out to the edge and I liked, if there's something really curvy, I like to put another diagonal right there because I think it's super helpful just um, in problem solving, okay? So <clears throat> moving forward, doing the same thing all the way around the letter. If any of these extra lines are confusing, just clean it up as you go along. Wide erasers are great for that. And then you have to decide how much depth you want it to have. So when I say depth, um, we're looking for a line that makes the three-dimensional illusion of the letter. So for your A, Alonzo, what I'll do is I'll work from this leg right here. It doesn't really matter where you start, but that little curve right there looked like a fun spot to start, so that's why I did that. Now that intersection point becomes really important. We'll go to the side of the letter A, and we want to create the exact same angle. Okay. So notice it disappeared behind the L. Okay, that scares some kids. It's okay. Things overlap. It's not really a problem at all. Okay, so um, I want to reflect this arch so I kind of know where I want to put the arch right here. So I'll start it right here and I'm just going to match it until it gets to that diagonal. And then right here I have a curve so I'll just do the same thing. I'll just match the curve on over and then I'll get rid of the extra lines. Okay. So trust your eyes, you know, if it looks wrong, it probably is wrong, and if it looks good, then leave it, okay? Sometimes, sometimes there aren't good rules for making things look great, and you just have to work it out, okay? All right, so um, that, that is a three-dimensional bubble letter A. We'll move on to the L. Okay, we have a part of the A inside the L. Never fear, we have a white eraser to get rid of it. Okay, the L is in front of the A in this case. So we'll erase the parts of the one that uh, is behind. Okay, so then we have the arch of the L. Here's the two diagonals that came from the L. We'll create the same exact arch to the best of our ability so that it matches the bottom of the L. So we're trying to copy the bottom of the L and we'll get rid of all the extra parts and pieces. And then there we go, okay? Now this part right here, we can let it disappear behind the L, but I think it would probably look better if we dropped a vertical. So we'll do that, okay? Now here's the O, furthest outside edge. That one gets pretty tight to the end, but it's totally fine. Look for the highest point of the curve drop um, from the letter O. We're going to be in this general area here as we touch down with the very tip of the O. And that's a, a lot like our cylinders that we were learning about this year. Okay, so cylinders uh, need to have the same degree of curve reflected at the bottom. Okay, then inside of an O you just want to do kind of an ellipse that makes sense. So we're going right back to all that vocab that we did at the beginning of the year. So intentful learning, okay? We were not learning it just for no reason. We were learning it so that we can do things with it, okay? So um, this side of the end line straight up to the vanishing point, so I don't need to put anything there. Um, but if it didn't line up, then of course I would put something there. I'm going to go on the outside edge of the 
rounded spot of the letter N and go around and check, same story, this is not going to show me anything either, so I don't have to put anything there. All right, so we will start again at this point. We'll round this out. So we've got that three-dimensional side figured out. That almost looked like shading, so I was going to clean that up for a minute. Okay, we'll go right across and we'll do this part. Now this, I think I need an extra guideline for, because I'm like, okay, it's rounded, but then it goes straight up. So what I'll do is I'll round it, and then I'll go straight up right between those two diagonals. So that's where it becomes a little bit important to have that, because that intersection right there is going to help us create this angle. Notice I'm matching. Make sure that you match. Okay, so if it's rounded, round it. If it's straight, make it straight. I'm going to clean this work up a little bit. I'm going to go out here. To the letter Z. And <laughs> let's see, let's start with the bottom since we've been starting with the bottom for this most of this time. It curves up a little bit in the middle, so I'm just going to copy it exactly as it was from the original shape. I'm erasing all of these con confusing transcending diagonals here, and then I will go up to the top, and I'll find a good spot to cut off this Z to where it looks like it has enough depth and not too little depth, so that looks like a good spot. Then I want to go out and find a spot for the side as well. So I'm going to give it a pretty good amount of depth. Not too little, not too much. So that, that's how you do the three-dimensional side there. Okay. So we're already over here on this letter O and we're only 11 minutes in. Okay. Uh, again, by concept, the intention of this was to give you something that you could knock out quickly compositionally. And then, of course, the vast majority of your time is spent on the decoration. Okay, so the decoration is important. I, it would be nice if it represented you in some way, but if you just want to decorate it nicely, that's fine with me. Just make sure it's not childish and, you know, don't do the cop out thing, which is like pick polka dots and stripes because it's easier just to get it done. Do something that you care about that you like. Okay, so um, the furthest edge of our O wants to hit about like right here and I'm just estimating that based on the Z. Notice that I do turn my paper if it becomes uncomfortable for my body in any way. Uh, that's way too steep compared to this so I need to shallow that curve out a lot. I don't know what I was thinking. I was turning it all over the place and it got weird on me so I had to fix that real quick for you. Okay so let me look at it now. Okay. Um, still think this needs to come up a bit. And then that's cool because I can put a, my diagonal for my Z back in there and I can get rid of that. Sometimes I leave that diagonal to map out a highlight or a shadow. Again, that is entirely up to you as the artist and put some kind of interior ellipse that you think makes sense for the inside of an O or a B or Sometimes even an A, just depends on what you're doing. Okay, so Alonzo, I hope this helps you a whole bunch. Um, again, any lines that are unnecessary, get rid of them, clean it up, do an excellent job decorating it. But I, I have confidence in you. I know you can do it. Maybe, maybe you think you can't right now or it looks scary. You can do it. Okay, uh, you just have to start believing in the fact that there are some fundamentals. Talent certainly helps. Um, these are all fundamentals, and I've, I've honestly never had a student who couldn't do it. It might have taken them a little bit longer, but hopefully the video will help you out.